So I wrote this really nice epilogue to the really big article that I mentioned before, and I just want to read it out. I'm going to stand behind the podium and stop moving around. Um, we live in an age where the great engines of our time are spun simply out of ideas, tethered to the universe only by the flickering of charges in a silicon dye. Sadly, I don't think I'm ever going to fly through the sprawling dark cities and networks pictured in film. It hurts especially that I'll never be able to pull off sick grinds with my friends in cyberspace on the internet superhighway or probably learn how to rollerblade. I do think ha that, however, the things that we put into our computers live in their own little universe, so drastically different from our own. There's no concept of space here, but there are universal laws, rules upon rules, upon which a software application, an app, a program, a video game will live and die. We came up with these, of course. We call them protocols or APIs sometimes. As someone who finds vulnerabilities in software, many parts of this foreign universe are more intricately familiar to me than the places I've lived. Someone with the right knowledge can send a little idea of their own into the computer, one that interacts, competes with, and manipulates others' ideas to the author's own ends. All of us with these abilities have a moral compass they must construct for themselves. I don't think anything has given me more respect for an individual's right to their own boundaries and privacy than living and working every day with the knowledge of how to strip those boundaries away. Not all I end up seeing the same way. I try, to do, I try my best to do the right thing, but sometimes you can't help trying to avoid putting yourself in that place where you should be doing the right thing. You ask yourself, if I invest a little time trying to do the right thing, am I going to be sucked into a 57-day trek trying to see it through? There comes a point in which doing the right thing seems to have been the wrong choice. If you choose to walk down the moral high road with security issues, sometimes you'll find people who care as much as you do. Other times you'll find people whose job you're just making more difficult. People who think you're trying to harm them or their company and people who just don't understand. These are fights you have to fight yourself. I'm happy to be working in security in a time when we have bug bounties where sometimes if the planets all align, I can feel like I didn't do the right thing just because I had to. But the places where security help is needed most are the places that don't have these security investments. The places that don't know, can't afford, or don't understand the value of security. The places with no security email addresses or responsible disclosure procedure. The security issues I found were complex. The issues that made fixing them take 57 days are simple and common. Good security is an invisible luxury most places can't afford. Security teams are expensive and hard to measure successful. Security is young. I hope if I have children, they get to live in a world that better understands the risks and rewards of putting their data in that little silicon universe. Uh, I have a little note that I copied from my article here that says, take care of yourself, stay healthy, stay cozy, get regular exercise, take breaks, go outside, look at a plant, be as real with people as your feelings are to you. And I think that's a note for me, but I've read it out anyway. 